Okay, so this is going to be basically installing the rotor slash hub. I have the seal on with the inner bearing packed, then also the outer bearing, then you have your lock washer, then your castle nut. Um, I have it on here, a little loose um, right now. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten this to 12 foot-pounds as we're spinning the rotor. That way we can get the bearings to seat properly. So go ahead and do that. Then just slowly tighten it as you're turning. Okay, so it's at 12 pounds now. Then the hole in the spindle for the cotter pins, like right there. So I'm gonna back this off just a smidge. So we get the line up here. There we go, just like that. Now it's all set to rock and roll. There's no no play or anything, obviously it's kind of hard to tell with no tire on there, but that's basically the proper procedure, at least what I've done in the past, and I've never had issues with it, so I'll go ahead and I'll set the cotter pin up, put the, uh, the cover on, and we'll go from there. So I got the cotter pin on and bent up, put some more grease on there. I got the dust cap here. Put some extra grease in that too. So it'll be all fully packed, ready to rock and roll. Then this stuff here is from O'Reilly's. I think it's like five or six bucks. Um, always had good luck with it, so that's good stuff. Uh, what I'll do next is with the power stop brakes, um, these here, uh, you actually have to, for G-body applications at least, you actually have to sand down the brake pads uh, to get enough clearance for the caliper when it's loaded to mount on here and it's still actually able to spin enough so the rotor will even move. Um, I had a heck of a time figuring out what was going on, thought it was going crazy, um, so I called uh, Power Stops tech line and the guy knew exactly what was going on. Uh, I did the other side already and sanded it down just a little bit. You don't need to take a whole lot off. There's just barely enough on each pad. I mean, super small amount just to get it to clear so I can put on the caliper. So I will show you that process here next. Okay, again, this is the brake pads for the power stop kit for the G-bodies. Um, the big thing, the reason why you have to actually sand some of the surface off to get it when the caliper's loaded to fit over the rotor is because uh, this is all per power stop, their tech guy there, um, is that the rotors are an inch and a quarter thick versus the standard, which is an inch. Now, obviously, if you're using a stock brake caliper, that's going to leave you with less room for the brake pad to move around in there. So that's why they say to sand some of this down uh, to get it to fit. So let's go ahead and do that. See, then it's not that much I took off, just a, a little bit of it there. So I'll do that with the other one and get the caliper loaded to put on. Then I'll cut you guys back in. All right, so I got the pads sanded down and cleaned off and 
the brake caliper grease all set to go. So I'm going to see if this will put on here. So it's just enough clearance. It still drags some, but new pads will always drag until you break them in. And our stop has a very specific break in on their box here. Basically five aggressive stops from 40 to 10 miles an hour. Then five stops from 35 to five. Then you drive around for five minutes, let everything cool off, then it should be broke in. So, but yeah, that's about it. I'm gonna put the grease the pins up here and mount the caliper, and I'll show you that here in a second. Okay, I have the pins just sitting there right now, but the pins themselves are. There we go. Are an Allen headed bolt, and the correct size is three eighths. So I'll slide that back in. Just have it sitting there. get snug. Spin it by one hand, then it should be good. And get the old torque wrench out, set it to 35. Uh, this one here, by the way, um, it's e torque. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, it does from 10 to I think 100 foot pounds. Um, my wife actually got me this uh, as a early birthday present for me, but uh, this thing has been a lifesaver. It's super accurate, um, lights up, has foot pounds, inch pounds, Newton meters, all that on here. So it's, it's pretty neat, but uh, this thing was like 90 bucks, but well worth it. So. all set to go. I just wanted to tell you what I did and what I ran across because I couldn't find nothing as far as why the brake calipers weren't going on the spindle there to mount on the rotor. It's because the pads were too thick. Because to get cross-drilled and slider rotors, you have to have at least a minimum of a inch and a quarter thickness to work. And the stock ones are only an inch, so... Um, 
again, power stops tech line guy is like super helpful, very, very knowledgeable there. So I recommend if you have any issues calling them, but again, this is what I ran into. This is what I'm doing and it seems to work a-okay. So, um, yeah, that's it. Just wanted to give a small update of what's been going on with the cutlass. So I got basically the front suspension back together. I got to do the tie rod ends and the sway bar and all that stuff. So, but it's getting there. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and hit the bell for notifications when I get chances to upload more videos. So hopefully here next week or so, I'll have this thing on wheels rolling around. So I'll catch you guys later.